Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to have you with me here today. Today I'm going to be talking about one of the greatest misconceptions about Victorian millinery, and that is the use of peacock feathers. How can you tell if a hat is actually Victorian or if it's a reproduction? If it contains peacock feathers, it is almost certainly a reproduction. The inclusion of peacock feathers is a telltale sign that a hat or any other type of millinery is not an actual antique, but is in fact a modern recreation. You see, contrary to popular belief, in almost all of historical Western fashion, peacock feathers have hardly ever been used. So if you see a Victorian or an Edwardian or an earlier style of hat that has a peacock feather in it, it's almost certain to be either a reproduction or it has been tampered with at some point in its life. Not 100% of the time, I'm sure that there is an example somewhere of a Victorian hat with a peacock feather in it, but in general, if you see a peacock feather, it's not going to be an original. And the same thing generally holds true with many accessories in, in other eras, too. For example, in the 16th century, it was fashionable for wealthy ladies to carry fans made out of feathers, but I can't find any evidence of peacock feathers being utilized for this purpose. Now again, I'm not saying that they were never used for this purpose, but I'm saying that it is not nearly as common as you might think that it was. I was able to find this portrait here of a lady carrying a peacock feather fan. This dates from around 1700. So although this shows that it was done, it doesn't disprove my thesis because this is a very, very rare example. In fact, it's the only example that I could find of peacocks being used in a fashionable way prior to the Victorian era at all. Similarly, in the 18th century, it was very fashionable for ladies to wear feathers in their hair. I cannot find any evidence of peacock feathers being used for this purpose. Again, I'm not saying that it never was done, I'm just saying that it was not done nearly as often as you would think. Ostrich feathers tended to be much more fashionable and much more widely used. You can find plenty of examples of women with ostrich feathers in their hair. I cannot find any examples of women with peacock feathers in their hair. Now the main focus of this video is hats from the Victorian and Edwardian periods. Now I've been able to find only five examples from in the entirety of the Victorian and Edwardian period, so it's 1837 all the way up to 1910, of peacock feathers being used for millinery. The first is this tricorn hat from around 1815. It makes use not of the large tail feathers with the eye motif, but of the small iridescent blue and green feathers from the peacock's neck and head. Second is this hat and muff set from around 1914, 1913 to 1914, which is kept at the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. You can see that they all make use of the same iridescent blue feathers from the head and neck of the peacock, but not of the eye motif tail feathers. Additionally, they incorporate the entire taxidermied head of the peacock. This hat from circa 1910 also makes use of the very poorly taxidermied head and neck of the peacock. Look at that thing. <laughs> its eyes are quite humorous. This 1830s pelerine cape, which is held at the Cleveland Art Museum, is made out of many different types of feathers, including peacock, but again, it only uses feathers from the head and the neck of the bird, not the striking tail feathers. In fact, this muff, which dates from around 1905, is the only piece that I could find that actually makes use of a peacock's tail feathers, which I am convinced has not been altered in some way. This hat from around 1910 does include the tail feathers of the peacock, but I'm almost entirely certain that this hat has been adulterated at some point in its life and that these feathers are not original. If you notice, not one of these examples, at least not one of the ones that I think is actually original, features the peacock tail feather in a hat. In fact, I've only been able to find one, one representation from the Victorian era of the tail feather of a peacock being worn in a hat. Now, this is obviously not an extant garment, it is not a depiction of an extant garment, and it is not an image of a fashionable garment from the time. This is a rather whimsical depiction of what is, I believe, supposed to be an idealized peasant boy. In other words, this is not a depiction of clothing that people were actually wearing at the time. I have been able to find a couple of written accounts of people wearing peacock feathers in their hats or uh, using peacock feather fans, for example. However, these have all been second or even third hand accounts written many, many years after the 1800s had passed by and generally written in a way of, oh, my grandmother told me about such and such in the 1880s. So none of them are incredibly reliable. Now, once again, I'm not saying that peacock tail feathers were never used but they weren't used nearly as much as one would think, given how striking they are and given how often they appear in historical reproductions. So why was that? 
Well, I'm afraid the answer to this query is a big, I don't know. I don't know. I tried to figure it out. I searched high and low and far and wide. I searched all of my books, nothing. I searched the internet, nothing. I just thought about it from a logical point of view, nothing. I do have a couple of theories, but none of them are particularly convincing. So I'll go through my theories and tell you why I think they don't really hold water. And if you can think of a reason, please let me know. Because I'm sorry, I don't have a satisfying conclusion to this video. I just don't know. I know that they were not using peacock feathers because we can we can see that they're they're not being depicted in a fashionable way. I don't know why. But here are my theories. Theory number one. They were prohibitively expensive and people just couldn't afford to use them. This is almost certainly untrue. Even if they were extremely expensive, we would still expect to see the tail feathers of peacocks appearing on the hats of the super rich. We don't. Also, and more convincingly, throughout the 19th century, peacock feathers were used quite extensively for purposes of interior decoration. Here I have the hearthstone, or life at home, and it is kind of a, a domestic guide, guide for domestic life. A household manual containing hints and helps for homemaking, home furnishing, decorations, amusements, health directions, the sick room, the nursery, the library, the laundry, etc. And it was published in 1888. This book is a gold mine for tips on Victorian interior decorating and manners and culture and just kind of anything you would ever want to know. On page 238 in the chapter marked Household Ornamentation, it says the following. As the season approaches, when the fires are about to die out, there comes the question of fireboards, or some means of replacing the cheerful glow of the hearth. One of the prettiest ways is to cut out of black net the shape of the peacock's tail, and mount it and then cover it with the feathers of the peacock, which are now so happily introduced into all kinds of decoration and are especially adapted for this purpose. In the center can be placed the head and the breast of the bird itself, if possible. If not, a bird with suitable tints, such as comes for millinery purposes, can be used. There already, I'm just gonna break in and say, clearly they have access to peacock feathers and they're very common. It also says that if you can't get the head and breast of a peacock, you can use instead the head and breast of a bird used for millinery purposes, implying that peacocks were not used for millinery purposes. To carry on, there are in fact Few more beautiful feathers than can be found in our ordinary barnyard fowls, which might be saved and used in various ways. Other beautiful fireboards can be made of silk, linen, or any of the woolen goods which come for decorative purposes and embroidered with silk and crewels. So this is teaching you basically how to make a fire screen with a peacock's tail on it and then the peacock's head and breast coming out so it looks like the peacock is emerging from the fire screen. Now. This demonstrates that peacock feathers were not at all prohibitively expensive, that they were in fact very easy to come by, and that they were popular and fashionable in home decor, but also that they were not being used for hats. This book was also not targeted at the super rich, it was targeted at middle class ladies, and again it says that they're not going to have any trouble in acquiring peacock feathers, so clearly the reason that they weren't using them in their hats had nothing to do with their price and their cost. Another theory is that, well, perhaps they were incredibly inexpensive and thus were sort of de classe. This is also very unlikely to be true, because if this were the case, then we would expect to see them on the hats of very poor people, and we don't. Also, if they were de classe, we wouldn't expect to see them being used for interior decoration, which, again, we do. So that doesn't really hold water. Another theory is that perhaps it was because peacock feathers are considered to be unlucky. I have here the Dictionary of Superstitions. About peacock, it has this to say. First, it quotes Hollinshed from 1586. The Lady Alice Kettle was charged to have nightly conference with a spirit to whom she sacrificed in high way nine red cocks and nine peacock's eyes. I don't know exactly what peacock's eyes means. It probably either means their actual eyes or the eye mo the tails with the eye motifs, but that could be where the peacock tail feather superstition got started. It quotes somebody who wrote into a newspaper in 1865 saying, K. 
Can anybody inform me as to the origin of the theory that the possession of peacock's feathers brings ill luck to the owner? 1866, somebody else wrote into the same newspaper and said, I can vouch for a superstitious feeling regarding peacock's feathers being general in Derbyshire and surrounding counties. It is considered extremely unlucky to have them in the house, and they are believed to bring losses and various misfortunes, including illness and death, to the inmates. I have seen people perfectly horrified when a child or other person has unwittingly brought into the house one of these feathers. It quotes another newspaper entry from 1881, saying, quote, A servant hailing from March, Cambridgeshire, seeing peacock's feathers brought into her master's house for decorative purposes, remarked, quote, within the quote, we shall never have no more luck now, end quote. 1883, it is remarked that, quote, the good folk of a certain Nottinghamshire village near Southall wondered at the clergyman's wife for allowing peacock feathers to be set up in her little daughter's nursery, for the young lady would never be married if she did. In 1890, it was remarked that peacock feathers in the house makes old maids. In 1899, the Newcastle Chronicle said, quote, It is very lucky to have a live peacock on the farm, but very unlucky to have peacock feathers in the house. So on and so forth. So, it's unquestionable that peacock feathers are considered to be bad luck. However, that doesn't seem a convincing reason for not having them on your hat, because again, we've shown that it was very common to use them for interior decorative purposes, and not everybody is superstitious. So if that were the reason, one, you would expect to not see peacock feathers being used for purposes of decoration, and two, you would expect to see some people still wearing them on their hats. My last flawed theory is that maybe peacock feathers just didn't fit in with the aesthetic of the time. Maybe people found them ugly. Now, this is, again, very easily shot down by the fact that they were used quite commonly in interior decorating. Also, though, we see the motif of peacock feathers popping up all over the place in the Victorian and Edwardian eras. For example, look at this mantle from the 1880s, or this waistcoat from the 1840s. They both have the peacock motif on them. So, if the motif of the peacock feather was considered to be unattractive, why would they make such broad use of it? This video does not have a satisfying conclusion. I cannot tell you the reason. I would love it if you could tell me the reason. Maybe there's some very obvious thing that I've overlooked, I don't know. But if you do know the reason, please, please do tell me. But I can tell you that if you're ever making a Victorian hat, don't include peacock feathers, because for whatever reason, they tended not to use them for millinery purposes. A huge, huge thank you to the people who support this channel on Patreon. Mary Royal, Kit Kat Stitch, Sandra White, Emily Donnelly, V. Birchwood, Kiara Craft, Amanda Martin, Heather C., Neves Cavara, Mary Mead, and Chelsea Ross. If you would also like to support this channel on Patreon, you'll find a link in the description. No hard feelings if you can't, but there will be hard feelings if you don't follow me on Instagram because, to my understanding, it's free, although there has been some uh, confusion about that. You should also like this video and turn on the notification bell so you can get notified when I upload new videos. And uh, yeah, please tell me why they didn't use peacock feathers because I would love to know. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.